uh, this new focus for you in, in, in what you do in the online world is more driven for the men over 40. How to train, how to eat, how to rest, how to, how to manage, you know, maybe your hormones, like all these different things that play mm-hmm. into the, the, a very different approach and being safer with the way you do things, mm-hmm. warming up. And, and so go, go in and in, dive into that sure. a little bit, like what, what you're really passionate about right now. Yeah, well, as a lot of guys in this fitness industry, I've suffered my share of injuries. Mm. And my first major injury happened in 2008, it was. It was January 2008. Because that was around the peak of my bodybuilding. At that stage, I won the light heavyweight division and overall title at a competition up in Canada. So that was the pinnacle of, of my bodybuilding career at that stage. I won that overall title, which is something I was striving for for years. I mean, I'm not one of these guys who off the start, you know, had success in bodybuilding. Yeah. It took me 12 years of competition to win a title. So that w- this was at this stage, right? I won the title and I was feeling good. I was in my best shape. And then I was doing a squat workout. And this was after the competition rebound. So I was... I was had a lot of weight on it. If you're familiar with bodybuilding competition, like when you diet down and then after the show, you'd put on a lot of weight. Now, some of it is good quality muscular weight. Some of it's just extra fluid and water retention. And of course, obviously some is body fat as well. But I was feeling strong. So this was, you know, a few months after the show, I had my weight back on and I was feeling strong. So I was doing a heavy squat workout and I was doing five by five. And I kid you not, fifth set, fifth rip, I was coming up out of the bottom of the squat and then all of a sudden, I just feel this rip. And oh my I was gosh. like, what the hell just happened? Like, what happened? For those of you listening to this, my right arm, like, obviously, you're, you've got your barbell across your back and you're yeah. tucked in. My right arm, the elbow just flared out to the back, and I felt this weird sensation in my armpit. And I, this was crazy. So anyway, I managed to rack the weight on my own. And I said, that felt weird. And I started going around the gym and asking people what I had done. Because I didn't know. And then one guy, he had torn his pec just a few months earlier. And I said, what did it feel like when you tore your pec? And he explained it to me. And I said, I think I just tore something. And he, I explained it was in my armpit. And he put his hand there in my armpit. And he said, man, you got a gap there. So I literally, the muscles that tie in from the triceps and the yeah. lat area, yeah. there's a tear. And right now, there's still a gap there today. So I tore this tie in. It wasn't actually the lat, but when I'm explaining it to people, I just say I tore my lat. But it's actually, if you look at an anatomy chart, it's one of these tie in muscles from the tricep to the lat torn. Very interesting. And that caused so much problem with my training. I couldn't do presses, I couldn't do rows, I couldn't do pull downs. And that, so right from my best shape ever to having this injury, and that set me back over a year in my training. It took me a full year to get back to doing a pull up. The way it is, as you get older, it, it's a slower process. But the thing is, you don't have to kill yourself and s- torture yourself in order to get lean. Like, you just have to tip the scales yeah. so that you're slowly losing versus slowly gaining. That's right. right. You know, it's just so think of the is. long term. I mean, it, just, it could only be like a few hundred calorie deficit. But as long as it's a slow loss versus a slow gain. Yeah. You can maintain a lean physique over no, the long term. There's no so, doubt about it. And and yeah. people kick themselves because they see these huge numbers on mm. TV shows, you know, yeah. five to ten pounds of, of weight lost in like a, a, yeah. a five to seven day period or something. Or and, the biggest loser it, competition. The, yeah, it's that and type it, of thing. And yeah. it's so unrealistic. Yes. Is that show even on anymore? I don't even I don't know. think it is, but I, that that really set the, some unrealistic expectations. It really did. Yeah. And, and it was it was kind of a lot of un as as much good as it did, I think, to inspire mm-hmm. people. People for change, it did a lot of uh, unrealistic uh, uh, kind of like goals. I think for people, for sure. like you know, yep. these twenty pound week weekly weight losses and stuff back to back. It's like, yeah. well, no one's going to be able to do this at yeah. home. If yeah. you can lose five pounds in a month, mm-hmm. you you're doing great. You're doing really good. Absolutely. You, you know, it's thirty five hundred calories is a pound. Yeah. So I mean to to cut out you know two three four hundred calories a day that's gonna take a long time for that for that to to add up but yeah. it like you said I love that that's a great thing that you said it's like are you slowly losing or mm-hmm. are you slowly gaining that's and it's it. it's gonna be one or the other pretty right. much and so if you can just nip that that, that you know those extra two three four hundred calories on a daily basis yeah. and get it working in your favor. 
three, four yeah. months goes by in a snap of a, yeah. of a finger, right? And and all of a sudden sure. you're 10, 12, 15 pounds lighter. That's huge. I mean, I'll give you some practical tips. And this is stuff that I've done to lose that weight without counting calories, without counting macros. Now, for those listening, I'm not against counting calories. I'm not against counting macros. And in fact, when I coach somebody, I always recommend that they start off doing that. Mm -hmm. Because most people, if you've never focused on nutrition, you don't know how much protein is in a chicken breast or how many grams of carbs are in a a cup of oatmeal or or things like that. You don't know these things. So you're way off. Yeah, oh, way off. No clue. People have no idea. So, yes, start with counting your macros and, and counting your calories so you just understand food and nutrition in general. But once you get the basics, like you've been doing that for, for years, once you've been doing that for a while, you don't need to keep doing it because it's just another mundane task. I mean, I hate to have to sit down and weigh everything out before I eat it. That takes the pleasure out of a meal, right? If, if you have to weigh it out before you eat it versus just sit down and eat it, <laughs> right. right? It takes the pleasure out of it. It really is. It takes the whole, you know, the, the oh, I, I can go on and on, but it just takes the fun out of eating. So I like one of those a day. So where you're at right now from where you were about a year and a year and a half mm-hmm. ago when you were, you know, kind of fed up with, with your physique at that yep. point, uh, what, what's your transformation uh, in the terms numbers, of numbers, the yeah. numbers on the scale haven't changed a lot. A lot of it was uh, actual body composition. Mm-hmm. So when I started, I was around 220, and now I'm around two, 205. So the numbers, I mean, yeah, they're 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 yeah. lower, but a lot of it was just a, a transformation in terms of a body composition change. Yeah, right, recomping as we yeah, call re- it. Yeah, recomping. Yeah, because yeah. I was getting more consistent with the workouts obviously more consistent with the nutrition and that just you can build muscle and burn fat simultaneously i know some people say you can't but 99 percent of the people listening to this can it's only when you're at that pinnacle level like say a bodybuilder getting ready for a competition you know you're not going to go from 10 percent body fat to five percent and build muscle simultaneously right right? at that stage yes you have to pick and choose but the average person who just wants to lose weight and get in shape, yeah. you can build muscle and burn fat. So oh, without shape. question. Mm-hmm. Without question. If your nutrition's on point and your yep. training is smart, uh, you're, 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 there's going to be muscle d- developing. And when we build muscle, yep. our bodies become more like a, this mm-hmm. revved up furnace and it does a better job yep. of metabolizing fat. You burn fat For better sure. with more muscle. Uh, and and uh, so that's... I, I love that. And, and in terms of your training, like what's your structure look like now for in a given week? Are you doing bodybuilding splits? Are you doing more total body uh, lifting? What are you doing? I, I've been doing more total body workouts. And the way that I structure my workouts now is I like to refer to it as my yin and yang training system. This is The way I do it is I have high intensity weight training one day, low intensity cardio the next. And I just alternate it back and forth. And I find it's such a it's such a simple plan, but it's very complimentary because during those low intensity cardio days, you're getting that active recovery, mm-hmm. still out getting exercise, yeah. burning calories, yeah. but I'm not breaking down the muscle. You know, I mean, and for me, my low intensity cardio is usually getting outside for a walk. You know, if sometimes if the weather's nice, I'll go for a mountain bike ride or or if the weather's not nice, I'll do cardio in the gym using the cardio machines. But more often than not, it's getting outside for a walk or a bicycle ride. Right. So that's my which is always I mean, always a great thing to do. Yeah, it's a full full body movement gets a heart rate Mm -hmm. up. It just makes you feel good. If you're outside, yep. that's a plus. You're getting the vitamin Active D. Active meditation. That's it, baby. <laughs> yeah. So that's great. I love that that back and forth yin, yin yang, yang approach. That's the way I look at it. High and and, and your your um, your weight training's more that high intensity interval style where it's, you're or or it varies. It varies. It really does. Okay. But it, I've been focusing more on total body workouts lately, mm-hmm. and because I, I find. If you're doing the old school bodybuilding splits, you know, the day one chest, day two back, day three legs, and all that, you need to be going to the gym frequently. Yeah. Like five, six days a week in order to get all your body parts done in a reasonable period of time. Like if you want to hit each muscle group once a week and you're doing a traditional bodybuilding split, you got to go six days a week. That's it. So if you're not doing that, then you need to have more, uh, basically combining more muscle groups per workout. So I'll probably do maybe a push-pull legs, I might do upper-lower body split, or I might just do a full-on uh, total body workout. Very much what we do here. Very it, similar. Yeah. 
tell you another thing I was speaking of all these different styles of training one thing that I've incorporated recently as well is doing more yoga yes I mean and we, I know that sounds so sissy and like people who are hardcore they're like <laughs> yoga what are you Lee talking Hayward about? yoga, yoga. What? but I'm tell if you've never done yoga before you don't realize how hard it is it, it, it's massively hard I mean it's it is like some of these poses when you watch like a yoga master, someone who's been doing it for years or decades or whatever. I mean, they make it look so easy. But then you try and do these, you know, upward, downward dog and warrior poses and all this. And you're shaking like a leaf and just, it's, it is hurt. It, it is, is very un hurt. Unbelievably yeah. tough. But uh, it, it does a lot for your mobility. Uh, I find another thing that's from a bodybuilding point of view or a powerlifting point of view, it's, it teaches you to relax under tension. Because when you're lift, like someone's doing bench presses or squats, and they're grunting and groaning, and they're, they're str that's right, they're straining, and they're they're making everybody know they're straining. Like yeah. they're not trying to hide it or anything like that. Right. You are straining, and you're letting the whole world know I am working my ass off here. But with yoga, you feel the pain, you feel the tension, and you just breathe through it. So it, it helps in so many other areas of life just to be able to relax while under stress. Yeah, no doubt about you it. Know, no, that's great. Powerful. I'm, I'm glad powerful. glad you brought that up because yeah. I, I actually did not know that you've uh, subscribed to that in, in your training in, rec in recent it's, times. I mean, I, I don't... I take the easy way out. I mean, I'm not going to like yoga classes or anything yeah, yeah. else, but YouTube, you do search for yoga sure. on YouTube and there are so many full length follow along yeah. yoga workouts. So I, I go to my living room, put YouTube up on the big screen TV and I have my own private yoga coach. I can rewind it and play it back as often as I want. I mean, it's, it's, it's perfect. And it's of course, great. I'm in my in my house, so nobody gets to see me when I'm screwing up. Exactly. Falling over right, it. right. I mean, because <laughs> I feel about as pathetic as it gets yeah, right? doing some of this stuff. But it's so yeah. beneficial mm -hmm. to us because it gets you to move kind of like you did when you were younger. Sure. I mean, kids move eff effortlessly in, with tumbling and with, mm -hmm. with all these different positions they can bend their body into. Yeah. And that's not a heck of a lot different than what yoga is trying to get you to do is just move your body mm -hmm. the way it was designed yeah. to move and hold positions for extended periods of time and, and, and open up the, the joints, open mm -hmm. up the hips and, and get your shoulders and your back to, to like be more more mobile oh, wow. and, and, and have some some thoracic mobility and stuff. Yep. All these things that you lose when you do a lot of heavy sure. lifting, you oh, know, you become, do it. become very muscle bound and, mm -hmm. and, and you lose a lot yep. of that, that range of motion. But uh, We've done a lot more yoga here in the last year with Coach Zach, who you, who yeah, you met, I've today. met him today. He's Great he's guy. terrific. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then when when we don't have him, guess what we do? You've heard of Yoga Burn? Yep. Uh, with Zoe, so yep. we do yo we put Yoga Burn on our flat screen there TV out here, and we we do Follow beginner on. level, mm -hmm. phase one, where you know workout yep. one, workout two. Yep. We're dying. We're sweating. We're twitching. We're like <laughs> snot bubbles, <laughs> like the whole thing, right? fighting like heck but you know what it, yeah. it's after we're done for like 30 40 minutes we feel fantastic and it's a great break between the, the mm -hmm. lifting and you know the conditioning day